We have to understand he may have had a case if this history did not exist. This history also needs to be taken into account. The third part is about the arguments in a court. The arguments in the court, whether they are petty or they are exalted, are best decided by the judge. The judge has finally announced something, passed an order. So everyone who brings a case is in their rights, as Dr. Singhvi, when he presents cases, to put out a point that he believes very closely or important to him. Okay. Why call it or give adjectives to it, petty or exalted? I think what happens in the court is finally what the court will decide. So I think that's why point. it's going back to the core point. The, be, the Congress party is trying to build a political case. Political case, Because okay. they probably feel themselves to be defensive. Is that the, the reason why, the sir, legal merits of their Do case. Dr. Singhvi, is that the reason why the, the High Court has observed that the AGL case smacks of criminality? These are words that have been used in the paragraphs of this judgment, which we've all gone through. They've used this adjective, very colored adjective, smacks of criminality. Para 32, 38 and 39 of the judgment. Yeah, yeah one second. Yeah, Dr. Singhvi. First of all, it suits the BJP to try and make allegations that it is a political, that we are casting expressions on the court, when, in fact, the demarcation between what we argue in court and what we do in court versus what we say in parliament and outside are two totally different things. But if the BJP thinks that by saying that they will prevent us from pointing out the machinations of Mr. Swam, of Dr. Swami being used by the BJP government, we are not. We are going to raise it in parliament and outside. As far as the summoning order is concerned, what you are reading, you should read the other paras also which says that all that I am holding is that this summoning order need not be interfered with. You can go and show cause to the summoning judge, namely to the magistrate. It is not a decision on merits. Indeed, if it were a decision on merits, then all of us should be sent to jail immediately. By the reasoning which you just shown, if it smacks of criminality, why did we get bail? Obviously because this is a prima facie observation on the summoning. And they said that we are not deciding the merits. It is only sufficient to say that we will not interfere in the order and send you to the summons court. That's all that it means, as every lawyer knows. So they are two totally different things. None of the observations there are on the merits. Okay, but, but sir, you will, you will also concede the point that the High Court has concluded, and I quote the High Court, that the gravity of the allegations have a fraudulent flavor, unquote. Let's talk a little bit about the merits here. We can, you know, you can use rhetoric as, at best, perhaps, a weapon to discredit this exercise, but look at what the court is saying. Let's go by what is in black and white. Look, obviously the court order has gone against us, which is why we will, in good fullness of time, take appropriate legal recourse against it. That is a matter between the High Court and the Supreme Court and not between the High Court and the lower court. But anybody who knows ABC of law knows that a summoning order, which is challenged only on the validity of the summoning, can be upheld or not upheld, depending not on the trial merits, but on a view that it is raises issues which need to be answered and not that it is to be quashed at that stage. That's all that the High Court is saying. I can discuss with you several merits, but there's no point doing it because we will deal with them either in the Supreme Court as in when we choose to challenge it or in the proceedings before the trial court. Well, let me, let me ask you then, sir. Isn't it also true that this whole question of Vandetta has only come about after the High Court put the Gandhis quite literally in the dock? When they issued these summons, suddenly Rahul Gandhi came out and made this vendetta charge. Let's not run away from the facts. Look at the timing. Obviously, obviously, we will raise the point only when the summons reaches us, isn't it? For two years, it was between Dr. Swami and the court. There was no locus. We cannot make ourselves an accused. But from day one when the summoning order was issued, we pointed out, in fact, we have argued specifically, that not only is the complainant a person with known antipathy, but he has no locus for the additional reason that he is a senior member of a political party which is antagonistically opposed to us. It's as simple as that. And we have said it in 2014 when the summoning order came. We have argued it in the High Court. I have myself taken press conferences on it. So our stand is the same. 
please understand what the court decides is between the court and us as appellants or as uh, applicants. We are complaining about the initiation, the use of Dr. Swami, the manner and mode in which he conducts the proceedings, okay. the ulterior objects and motives underlying Dr. Swami's all actions relating to the Gandhis of the Congress party. Those are matters of political vendetta is what we are saying. And it is no secret that in an attempt to elevate himself within the BJP, to curry favor with the masters of the BJP, he is doing it. And the BJP is orchestrating and managing every moment of it, okay. only retaining de de deniability. Let me... Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Singhvi. Thank you for joining me this evening. I want to bring in Mahesh Jaitmanani. Mahesh Jaitmanani, substantively, substantively, the Congress yes. says this is vendetta. The case has no legs to stand up. KTS Tulsi is here with us. Aryama Sundaram here is, with, is also here with us. And so is uh, Nalin Kohli of the Bharatiya Janta Party. Where do you stand on this vendetta charge? We've just heard Dr. Singhvi saying the reasons why he believes it's vendetta. But I mean, come on, uh, 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 this is done by Dr. Swami and there are two courts which have upheld it. There is a serious issue of misappropriation of assets of two cro 200 crores. I mean, this is a complete attempt to divert uh, people's minds away from the real issue. By politicizing it, you're forgetting How the legal it? issues. This is, a serious, this is a serious case of corruption. It is, a, it is a case of rampant corruption by the highest functionaries of the Congress party. I mean, uh, uh, you know, nothing is going to make this go away. They can try this political vendetta attack, uh, but ultimately they are going to have their day in court and they are, they are refusing to do it. They are not going to the Supreme Court, at least so far. If they thought this is such a futile, worthless case, which, is, which only smacks a political vendetta and has no intrinsic merit in it, why didn't they go to the Supreme Court? I mean, this is the top leadership of the Congress party, Mr. Tulsi, along with some of the closest... Mr. Tulsi, on facts, why didn't they go to the Supreme Court? If they were so certain of their case, why didn't they go to the Supreme Court? I also want Aryama Sundaram to respond to Mr. KTS Tulsi right after that. KTS Tulsi. Yes. Well, I would like to ask Mr. Jaitulani that how does it become corruption? Where is the allegation of corruption in this case? Where is the allegation of what Prevention of Corruption Act? Corruption is an Papa, offense only prevent? under... Prevention of Corruption Act. Uh, they, there was a time Are, 40 Tulsi, years ago me, when me, it me, used me, to be a crime under the Mr. penal Tulsi. code and when the special... Yes? <laughs> Mr. Tulsi, <laughs> please, you're, you're, you're completely... May I come in now, uh, I Rahul? I have to leave. I, I, one I, second, I, sir. One second. I did, yes. say th I did say this is a case under the Prevention of Corruption Act. I said it's a case of corruption in the sense that you have criminally misappropriated 2,000 crores of what associated journals by paying 50 lakhs. Where, who has misappropriated? How do you say this? Ra Rahul you can Gandhi, go on talking anything Rahul you Gandhi. like. Well, sir, who has the judge, I, I you said see, to, the judge no, has spelled out. Two judges. The complaint two does judges not. Have said so. The complaint does, the complaint does and not Mr. make. I am sorry. Mr. Complaint Mr. does not make any Mr. single Tulsi. allegation that anybody has taken but one Mr. rupee. Tulsi. And you say corruption of 2,000 okay. crores. Let, let me bring in, let me bring in Mr. Arya Masundram one, one, can, one can go on you talking anything on the television. Of assets. Mr. Arya Masundram. Why don't you go to court? Who has why don't you put your assets? legal brains where your political Have you seen the papers? Okay, 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 okay. Who okay. has taken the assets? I've seen the papers. Okay. Who has taken the assets? I've seen the papers. How do you say that? 2,000 crores is taken. Has, uh, by okay, one second, one second. Let's, 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 by, let's get more in. Only, no, let's you get. You're asking me a question. <laughs> okay, let's get less, less impassioned panelists in. Let me get Arya Masundram. Let me get Arya Masundram. Arya Masundram, look. Here we have Mr. Jaitmanani and Mr. KTS Tulsi arguing on either side of the fence. We understand why they perhaps feel compelled to do so because they seem to have gone through the documents and they've come around to the opinion, diverse as it is, that there is A, a case and B, there is no case. Uh, where do you come in on this, Arima Sundram? You've probably gone through the order yourself, 40 clauses. Well, let's, uh, Rahul, let's take some basic facts which we cannot go away from. Okay. One is a fact that there are two private companies who have had an exchange of assets etc. which can never be a case of anyone complaining except one of the shareholders of those respective companies. And on the other hand you've got a statement, an allegation that Congress funds have been misused in that. 
There again, the question is, who has complained about it? Is it a congressman? No. Is it a member of the Congress party? No. Are they members of the company? No. Are they shareholders or directors or officers of the company? No. The fact is, and that brings us to the second part, whatever may be the merits or the demerits of the case, the perception very clearly is that in such a case, here you have Dr. Subramaniam Swami, an avowed enemy of the Congress, who is with the BJP, who has persevered with this case, who is pushing this case, and who is the person who is really the prosecutor of the case. He is the complainant. Public eye, I don't think anyone, however naive they are, will think that Dr. Subramaniam Swami is very concerned about the welfare of the Congress party, to see that the Congress party funds are properly looked after. Nobody is going to believe that. The belief obviously is going to be that he is doing it with a political motive. Now, frankly, Dr. Subramaniam Swami himself has been quite candid about it. He says, so what if it originated from a vendetta? I can always carry on a complaint. And therein lies the rub. The fact is that public perception will have to be that it is politically motivated. Now, once that is the public perception of it being politically motivated, Dr. Swami may very well say, so what if it's politically motivated? If it's an offense, it's an offense. But the public perception is that the base is political motivation. The moment that is the public perception, then it detracts from the criminality in the public eye. Very it detracts from the criminality of agree. the act because the I focus is on political vendetta. And I know you don't agree, Mahesh. I don't, I don't expect you to. I'd like the to point is you cannot agree with it because you belong to the party who is being accused of the political vendetta. So I don't expect you to agree. Okay. I'm Let's talking about somebody who is totally Sundram. neutral in these matters and who is looking at the two perception. Two rebuttals. Arima so Sundram. I don't really look at that. Okay. Arima Sundram. anything other than that. Stay with me. Two rebuttals coming away. One is Mr. Jait Malani, then Nalin Kohli. Mr. Jait Malani goes first. Uh, Mr. Ariman Sundaram should know that the courts have repeatedly held that in cases of misappropriation of property and prevention of corruption, which is this, is, this being a case of the former, contrary to the subtle distinction with which Mr. Tulsi has tried to make, it is normally always public. That is in the, in the context of national resources, <laughs> one at a time. public monies, not, not, not private resources. monies. Even corrupt, even, even corrupt that in Angola's case. In, in, in Antulay's Even case, corruption, it was, you're it was right. As Mr. Tulsi said, there is no corruption here. One second. One at a time. I'm saying there's no, there, there, is, there is gross, there's no prevention of corruption act offense, but there is an act of criminal breach of trust of 2,000 crores worth of property. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, we are talking about the politi Who's political trust? vendetta is issue. Is it Dr. Subramanian Swami's trust? But Sorry, the question of locus has been no addressed. It is not minute. whose trust has been breached. The complainant is Dr. Subramanian Look, Swami. How is his I? trust being breached? All right, Mr. 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 Sundaram, let me just tell you, the law is very well settled that in criminal law, you don't require locus standi. Anybody can set the criminal law in motion. If somebody sees a murder, uh, uh, he oh, doesn't have to be a victim. Not in a private a complaint. Sorry, I don't agree Even with you. Even in a private complaint. Not I'm in a sorry, private the laws, complaint. The law is too, sorry, I can't the law is too well established. Sorry. Okay, let me... Yeah, sorry. So so once again, a criminal gentlemen. breach of trust must be somebody who is, says his trust has been breached. Okay, no, gentlemen, no, let's look at what the court has said. Clause 29. The law is too well established. One second, let's look at... One second, one second. May I also just come in for a minute, Rahul, please? Rahul, I have a comment. One second, Nalin Kohli, one second. Clause 29 of the judgment. Clause 29 of the judgment speaks on locus standi. Specific to this, because we are on that. Exactly, come to para 29. That is the point. Why don't you read it? There you go. Why don't you read it? That is the exact point, para 29. Mr. Kohli, read clause 29. Which deals locus standi. And I'm reading out four sentences from that, exactly what I wanted to do. I know that. That is the point I wanted to bring before. That when you're talking of yeah. the issue of locus standi in this particular case, Rahul, the High Court records in para 29. So one second, Mr. Sundar. One second. Let's listen this to this. This court finds the question of locus standi of respondent complainant to maintain the complaint in question pales into insignificance in the view of the fact that the apex court has taken in the Subramaniam Swami versus Dr. Manmohan Singh case which has reiterated that freedom of a private citizen to proceed okay, against the corrupt totally cannot clear. be restricted. And then the most important sentence comes, in a unique case, like the instant one, expanded meaning to the law has to be given. In the considered opinion of this court, the plea of locus standi cannot be restricted to typical cases of cheating, misappropriation, etc. As here is a case 
where the act of office bearers of a political party having criminal overtones is under scrutiny and so the challenge to the locus is hereby repelled. There you go. There are 29 Mr. and it's not a If the Congress party had taken this to the Supreme Court, yes. challenged it, Can I it would have been a good case. This is exactly what the court has said. May I reply before wants I leave? Yes, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Yes. May I quickly respond before I leave? The point of the matter is, it is a judgment of the High Court. The point of the matter is, I do not agree with the judgment. The fact is that, yes, Dr. Subramaniam Swami versus Manmohan Singh dealt with national assets. He dealt with public funds. He dealt not with somebody complaining that there was a breach of trust of his. If it's a public fund, every public has that money, and therefore it's a breach of theirs. Now, this is a very arguable issue. But everybody is forgetting the point I started with. Since it's being prosecuted by the person it is, since it's being prosecuted by him in the way it is, since he himself says, yes, so what, if it's political vendetta, I am saying that what has become most significant is factum of political vendetta and factum of criminality has actually taken a back seat right. in the public perception. Okay. And that is what I was trying to say. So basically you're saying that the Congress might end up winning the perception battle. Rahul, a quick comment. Mr. Kohli, Rahul, political, quick political comment. Political response. Rahul, political yes. response to yes, that. Yes, that's what I perception, Rahul, a quick comment. The perception is Let that the case is colored. No, it, that no the case it's a legal colored. response. It's a legal response. It's not about perception. What is important? No, that's secondary. What is important is that the political party, and this is the fact being recognized by the Honorable High Court, funds collected by the political party and the 90 crores advanced to AJL are funds collected from the public. From the public. public, and there are exemptions to that. Mr. Arima Sundaram, that's been written off. It is public so in money. Turn, yeah, that is Mr. why Tulsi. there is an expanded meaning that the court has taken care of. It is public money, Mr. Tulsi. It is public money at the end of the day. No, I'm sorry. The Congress party ha is trying to save and revive the newspaper, which is political newspaper. It was, it was founded for propagating the values of secularism and democracy. It was the mouthpiece of the freedom movement. Now, if, if the, the High Court says that there are areas of wages and there is no money with the associated journals, for the, the Congress party takes loan from the bank and gives this loan for the payment of wages of workers. How does this become misuse of the public money? The Congress party is only taking loan from the bank and paying the wages of 400, which is a humanitarian act. Okay. Then the High Court says pay for the electricity bill. The Associated Journals does not have the money to pay even the electricity bill. Okay, Mr. That is Jethmanani. why the newspaper closed down. That's the heart of this. And if they this. pay the electricity bill of, the, so of, of a newspaper which is so closely and intimately associated with the Congress go. history, then it can't become a commercial purpose. It can't become they a commercial purpose. They are using the public money for the same purpose for which the public has lent it to them. They, they, this case has completely got no legs to stand on. No legs to stand on. It Mr. doesn't Jay make Jay out detention in region for very single point, offense. On a legal point, you have precisely two minutes to rebut okay. Mr. Tosi. Two Let minutes. me tell you, sir. Yeah, very quickly, very quickly, Mr. Rahul. Let me tell you this. The, the fraud lies in the fact that the money of 90 crores was given to a, a 90 crores debt owed by Associated Journals to the Congress party was assigned for a paltry sum of 50 lakhs. 50 lakhs. This 90 crores with the Congress, uh, yeah, for 50 lakhs. So 50 lakhs, they got a, they got a debt of okay. 90 crores against which they bought shares of 99% of Associated oh, Journals. Can I they retired the debt, converted the debt into equity and took over 2,000 crores can worth I of answer? property. Now let me tell you something. Well, let, no, wait, I let me finish. Can you I had answer? enough of time. Let me tell you this. One minute. Now they say that this company, uh, uh, Young India, was a, Why are you was so a of charity the entity. It was, it, was a, it was a Section 25 company. Please let me tell you something, that they tried to destroy the nature of this 25 co uh, Section 25 company very soon by bringing in a circular saying that a Section 25 company can, can get rid of its charitable objects. And by the way, Rahul, let the whole country, including Mr. Tulsi, ponder on this. 
the, the objects of this 25 company, Young India, promoted by Rahul Gandhi, was the promotion of secularism and democracy. Towards that purpose, why did he have to take over uh, Associated okay. Journals and its 2,000 crores worth of assets? How did okay. that promote can, secularism? Okay, and since 2010, since 2010, what has he done to promote secularism and democracy through Associated Journals? Okay, Mr. Tulsi wants to respond, and after that, we have Dr. Subramaniam Swami one on one with us for the next 20 minutes. Mr. Tulsi, respond, please. You see, e even today, the uh, assets of, uh, of Associated Journals, which own last National comment Herald, after Mr. Tulsi. Okay. all the assets are still belonging to Associated Journals. They are the ones who are receiving the rents. They are the ones who are filing the annual return and showing the income which has been received. The Associated Journals has not transferred this money either to Congress. Associated Journals has not transferred this property to the Young Indian. Young Indian has not received a rupee from the Associated Journals. The shares have been transferred. For share transfer, the registrar companies has had no objection. When Dr. Swami approached the Election Commission, Election Commission said, political party is free to expend its money for whatever purpose they feel and they, they, the complaint was rejected there, there is nobody well, sir, the ED court, says there is no case no, the because court it was the money it which was to be taken answered as to why the genuine shareholders were marginalized comment. in the EGM which was attended by just seven nobody shareholders nobody is marginalized no, well, they, sir, nobody has gone here. to the, the, the no, registrar no. I'm sorry yes, sir. nobody has gone to the registrar they gave I have a comment also Rahul